who covers the 1967 Plymouth GTX Hemi by Ravel. It's kit number 7359. Now the GTX was a high performance option for the Plymouth Belvedere starting in 1967 and lasting until 71. Along with a high performance engine and heavy duty suspension, the GTX also featured different appearance options like the stripes and hood scoops that you see here. The base engine for the GTX was the 440 but you could also get the 426 Hemi as an option. Marketed as the gentleman's muscle car, the optional 426 Hemi could make it go from 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds and it could run the quarter mile in 13 and a half seconds right out of the factory. The skill level is a 2 for this kit which is for the intermediate builder. It's molded in metallic blue, plated and clear and transparent red parts with vinyl tires. It also comes with instructions and water slide decals which will augment with aftermarket decals from best model car parts. Now this sample is from the 1994 release but it's been reissued uh, at least half a dozen times since and when it's complete it's about 8 inches long, 3 inches wide and 2 and a quarter inches high. And here's a look at the box art for the kit. Uh, as you can see, and we mentioned, it's it's molded in a metallic blue. Uh, so, and that's part of the reason why it's just a intermediate skill level kit. Um, you don't need to paint it if you want a really nice looking model. Um, it won't have the depth uh, of a painted model, but it still looks pretty nice. And uh, all the parts. Uh, that you see here come with the kit including some stripes red line stripes for those tires there are the decals for the kit um, and as you can see you've only got a choice of black for the um, stripes uh, and if you're from Illinois uh, a nice set of plates but uh, we'll be switching the, those out for for the state of Michigan plates uh, along with some uh, of gra the graphics here for the dashboard uh, from best model car parts and, and you just cut these out and you glue them into position they're not water slide decals you just um, use a little white glue to put them in place here are the parts for the kit you can see the uh, chrome tree there and the tires uh, also the the windows are pretty clear and the uh, bright blue metallic pieces there uh, for the body etc now um, there's very little flash on my sample here and what there was uh, you can easily clean up with a sand stick or a hobby knife and there's some uh, really nice uh, interior and underhood detail uh, in some of the parts here the chrome is really bright uh, and just the right thickness and the tires have some really nice detail and tread tra uh, patterns on them pieces to assemble the engine and uh, you'll find that the uh, parts fit together very well. There's very little flash and, and there are options for the uh, chrome air cleaner and valve covers there. And there's also a carburetor and an alternator as well. Now the kit provides uh, a call out for the uh, 426 Hemi as well for the uh, air cleaner and uh, decals. But uh, the parts go together pretty easily you can see and uh, here's what uh, she should look like when you're done. Uh, the the chrome uh, valve covers uh, were were re, uh, re oh, stripped and painted uh, black. Uh, of course, you've got a steel-looking uh, uh, manifold there and an aluminum-colored engine, along with the Hemi orange, uh, the white oil filter, and uh, the black distributor up in the corner, along with the uh, fan and the and the pulleys. That there's a um, brace uh, between the uh, inner fender wells, and that'll need to be removed. Um, there, you'll also find, of course, uh, that there are some parting line, um, you know, uh, ra raised issues that go along the fender wells and over the top of the uh, drip edge, etc., and uh, down around the front and rear pans, as per normal. Just use a, uh, a putty knife to remove those, and, and you can see that uh, there's a little bit of flash here uh, in some of the... Um, pillar corners and uh, panels that come together there up towards the um, uh, cowl. So those will also need to be uh, sanded off a little bit uh, and gotten uh, to be flat uh, along with the uh, to match the rest of the uh, panels. So it's a little bit of work there but uh, not unusual for a model and especially one that's this old.
next uh, we'll turn to the body uh, painting and um, after you get the body all cleaned up from any imperfections uh, I went and used a, a bronze a metallic color and then of course uh, when that dried uh, trimmed out the uh, uh, the trim pieces with uh, some silver paint and also uh, the body color extends to the uh, lower portion you see the firewall here it's also been picked out uh, with some detailing uh, but that gets the uh, same same color treatment along with the uh, the core support uh, that goes into position there in the front as you see and it's got black uh, radiator and shroud portions on it as well and so these pieces um, will need to be uh, cleaned up as they are uh, before they are painted too and of course there were ejector pin marks in the roof and I painted the headliner white there and installed the glass and when that was done you know, I got uh, all the other pieces and put them into place as you've already seen. And uh, here's a close-up once again of that radiator and core support uh, combination. I painted the um, uh, roof liner a, um, a flat white. And also note that the, uh, the, the mirror goes in after the windows. The windows have been installed with some white glue. And there's also a dome light for the center of the roof uh, on the interior. And here's a look at the... Um, uh, pretty much the finished body. Uh, you can see that the um, uh, script on the side of uh, the fenders there has also been picked out with uh, chrome paint uh, and the body is now dried and ready to receive the interior. Here you see all the pieces for the interior. Gather those together uh, including the um, separated uh, side panels which makes uh, that portion much easier to uh, detail. So you'll assemble uh, the seats, of course, the halves, and you may have a seam there that you might want to clean up uh, along with the other pieces. I painted the dashboard a satin black and uh, also used chrome pen to um, highlight the trim around the gauge panels and the glove box, etc. And then, as you can see here, uh, we've added the um, the special uh, extra decal gauge sets that came uh in the aftermarket um, uh, sheet there and it really sets things up uh, there's also a nice uh, <laughs> tachometer there as you see that'll go on the console you can see it uh, in this photo here now the uh, side panels were painted uh, white uh, and, uh, and and marked uh, off with the chrome to highlight the the metal pieces uh, the seats of course are white and uh, so we got a nice uh, uh, dichotomy or uh, difference here between the uh, the black carpet and the uh, white seats and the dash. It's uh, a nice color combination that was, was actually um, common back then. You have to remember that the, um, the initial muscle car was basically a, a stripped down car without a lot of, um, you know, really a niceties. Now this one has bucket seats and a console and uh, the tack, but uh, the vinyl seats kind of show um, the level of quality and comfort, creature comforts that were um, just not the great big engine and the great looking exterior that they emphasized with the muscle car builds. I also found the center console to be a little too bright. It's chrome plated. Uh, so I actually sprayed it with some flat which kind of gives it a more of an aluminum sheen. And then I used a little black wash to uh, uh, highlight the, uh, the creases and, and bring out the detail. This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. Next, we'll be working with the um, under chassis and the exhaust there, so pull these parts out of the kit and stage them. Some script uh, for the copyright that's on the underbody there, on the in front of the fuel tank and. Uh, you can just scrape that off and or sand it off smooth so it doesn't show. Here you see that the engine is mounted into the um, chassis, uh, the, the front suspension portions and, uh, there of the frame. And um, now also note that you have to scrape off paint um, as well as chrome when you want to glue pieces together. So locate the uh, engine mounts and uh, use some strong glue to uh, glue that into position. You see here the uh, steering uh, box is just uh, in front of the engine there on the frame. When your engine is uh, uh, seated and fully dried, we can then uh, turn that uh, over 
and install the uh, chassis uh, into the body. Of course, the interior uh, goes into position first. And then um, we can do some detailing on the uh, chassis. You see the, the um, uh, gas tank is uh, a silver color, uh, along with the exhaust, uh, the steel pipes, and the uh, aluminum uh, exhaust uh, mufflers, and then add those to the bottom uh, up to the um, engine headers. When we turn the body back over after the, uh, the glue has uh, dried, uh, we can see that the um, your vehicle is coming together pretty nicely at this point. Here is a nice look at the uh, engine bay and as you can see there's still room on the sides of the engine unlike today's models but uh, uh, you've also got the water bottle there in white with a cap. The, the radiator cap has been uh, painted steel color. Uh, there's some uh, detailing that you can do to really make your um, car look a little nicer with the uh, engine bay. Now we've added the exhaust tips here and you can see why um, those Mopars had a little bit of uh, an edge when it came to uh, the appearance of the vehicle from underneath uh, because of the uh, body colored components down there. Next we'll work on the wheels and suspension pieces and um, I painted the uh, suspension parts satin black except for the shocks which I painted yellow. Um, you can use your favorite color shock <laughs> manufacturer's color. Um, and also uh, I sanded the tread on the tires to give them a little bit of road look more realistic and then I matte coated uh, with some flat spray the chrome wheels and used some uh, black wash and semi-gloss black around the slots uh, to make them uh, more realistic and I chose to use the red lines for the tires uh, but they're um, a little tricky you'll need some setting solution to get those to stay As are dried you can um, go ahead and assemble those wheels around the, the tires and uh, they're just like a sandwich uh, and once uh, you get those uh, together, and remember, you got to scrape that chrome before anything will stick to it. Uh, you can squeeze the uh, wheels into position, uh, axle stubs, uh, and just make sure that they are, you know, in line with the body. Okay, we're going to work on that back end. And uh, once again, I used that um, uh, flat clear, and I sprayed the rear bumper panel uh, and painted the center of it satin black. And I used uh, a black wash on the outside and glued the uh, lenses into position. Finally, I used the same flat coat on the uh, on the gas uh, cover, the you know the the gas door cover, and attached that uh, into position. Get some uh, some treatment now, and you have to open up the holes in the bottom uh, of it to uh, apply the scoops later. But you see the chrome uh, tips there as well as. Uh, a hood ornament, which uh, some of the 67 models still were, were uh, using. I also, um, you know, just like the rear, uh, the front bumper got a little coat of uh, flat matte, and then I went over the grill with some black wash. The rest of the chrome pieces, um, again, uh, I, I give that, a, I toned on the, the chrome, it seemed just to be a little bright. And then I finished up by installing the lenses with some white glue. Uh, and gluing the upper and lower grille uh, into position, which were finally attached to the front bumper. Your model is complete. And the only real issue I had um, was with some of the decals. The, um, the stripes on the, uh, uh, for, the, for the top of the hood and the back deck uh, seem to be kind of backwards. Uh, they actually make more sense according to uh, internet photos if you uh, if you switch those around, if you use the um, ones marked H and J on the back deck, you can extend those stripes up to the uh, rear window, which is what the actual cars had, and then you can just uh, use those uh, for the fronts, uh, the ones that are marked in in the back there. They just seem to fit better that way. The red line decals uh, for the tires and the um, uh, one for the air cleaner seemed to be a little bit uh, difficult to lay down. Had to use multiple um, decal solvent uh, uh, applications to, to get those to just kind of stay in place. But uh, other than that, there were no real assembly uh, issues. And the uh, Michigan license plates uh, uh, designated the old Motown spirit uh, of the muscle cars that came 
out of that period uh, around 1967 to 1972 and uh, was really exciting back then and if you put one of these uh, on your shelf um, you'll have the same exhilarating feelings that we did when we used to drive these around town. Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet.